Now we will look at the main functions of the membrane, transporting materials from one side to the other. This section will focus on passive transport. Think about what it means to be passive. Passive is when you don't exert any energy. Passive transport in the cell is when molecules are moved without the need for any energy. All molecules are in constant motion. This constant random motion causes molecules to bump into each other and then spread apart. Diffusion is this tendency of molecules to spread apart. When molecules are clumped up in one place, they will eventually spread out. They go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Look at the pictures on the bottom right. The top picture shows the yellow spheres spreading out. They are highly concentrated on the left side of the membrane. They move from the left to the right, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The difference in concentration is called the concentration gradient. The bigger this concentration gradient is, the faster the diffusion will occur. Eventually, the concentration of solution of solute will be the same on both sides of the membrane. This is called equilibrium. This does not mean that the molecules stop moving, only that they move both ways at the same speed, and so the relative concentrations stay the same. The bottom picture shows the movement of two different solutes at the same time in two different directions. Each solute moves down its own concentration gradient. This means the yellow spheres are only concerned about the yellow spheres. They are not affected by the concentration of the purple spheres. The net diffusion of yellow spheres goes to the right, and the net diffusion of purple spheres goes to the left. The word net is talking about the overall movement. Some molecules do move in the opposite direction, but mostly they move in the direction of the net diffusion. Diffusion is the tendency for particles of any kind to spread out from where they are more concentrated to where they are less concentrated. This process can also be described as molecules moving down their concentration gradient. Diffusion across a biological membrane is called passive transport, since the cell expends no energy to move the molecules. Oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules move into and out of cells by passive transport. In diffusion, the molecules were able to pass through the membrane. When they cannot pass through the membrane, instead the water in the solution is what moves. This is osmosis the diffusion of water across a selectively permeable membrane. Water will move from an area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration of water. Take a look at the U-shaped tube. The membrane at the bottom will let water pass through it, but not the purple spheres. On the left of the membrane has a higher concentration of water because it has less solute in it. And on the right of the membrane, it has a lower concentration of water because it has a high concentration of solute in it. The water will move from the left to the right side of the membrane. You can see in the after picture that the concentration of solutes is about even once the water stops moving. This is when the water has reached equilibrium. Again, this doesn't mean that all of the water molecules stop moving, only that they are moving in both directions at about the same speed. Tonosity is the ability of a surrounding fluid to affect change on a cell. There are three possibilities for tonosity isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic. Let's look at these one by one. Isotonic is when the solution surrounding a cell has the same concentration of solutes as the cell. Let's take a look at
Let's take a look at an example. If I draw a beaker, it's full of a solution, and we'll put a cell inside of the beaker. Inside of the cell, there are some solutes. The surrounding liquid in the beaker has the same relative concentration of solutes. So this example would be something like IV fluid. IV fluids are made to have the same concentration of solutes as your blood. So they don't affect the water concentration in your blood. So because the two liquids have the same relative concentration of solutes, the molecules of water are going to move out of the cell and into the cell at about the same relative rate. So this means that there's no net movement of water. A hypotonic solution has a lower concentration of solute than the cell. One example of this would be placing the cell into distilled water. So let's draw the beaker again. Here's my beaker. And here's the same cell. It has some concentration of solutes on the inside. But since this is a hypotonic solution, like distilled water, the concentration of solutes in the water is very low. So this means that the solute concentration in the solution is lower than the concentration of solutes in the cell. So the water is going to have a net movement. The net movement of water is going to be into the cell. I'll represent this with a big arrow. There is still some movement of water out of the cell, but it's fairly slow and not very prominent, so I'll draw that with a little arrow. So overall, the movement of water from a hypotonic solution flows into the cell. The last possibility is a hypertonic solution. It has a higher concentration of solute than the cell. An example of this would be placing the cell in salt water. So let's draw the same beaker. It's full of salt water this time. We'll put the same cell, which has a concentration of solutes inside of it. Only now it's in very salty water. So there is a high concentration of solute in the water. Now the water inside of the cell is going to move out into the solution. The net water movement is going to be out of the cell. There is a little bit of movement of water into the cell, but not very much. This could cause the cell to shrink up um, or shrivel. Clearly, the solution surrounding a cell can have a big impact on a cell. Most cells have to regulate their water balance to maintain their function. This is called osmoregulation. One example of this would be fish living in fresh water. The fresh water is hypotonic. It has a lower concentration of solutes than the fish. So water would tend to rush into the fish's body. The fish's kidneys will work extra hard to get rid of this excess of water. This mechanism is not going to be very effective if we take the freshwater fish and put it in salt water. In salt water, the fish is going to tend to lose water to the very salty hypertonic solution. So having its kidneys work to get rid of more water is not going to be effective. Plant cells and animal cells react very differently to different tonosities. In a hypotonic environment, an animal cell would expand and eventually burst. But plant cells are just fine because they have a tough cell wall that helps keep them from bursting. This is actually the normal state for most plant cells. 
In a hypertonic solution, animal cells will shrivel up, but plant cells go through a similar process called plasmolysis. Plasmolysis is when the plant membrane pulls away from the cell wall, but the cell wall of the plant cells does not actually shrink. This is the last form of passive transport, facilitated diffusion. This means we are still not using any energy, and the molecules are moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. What does it mean to facilitate something? Facilitating is helping. So facilitated diffusion is just when diffusion occurs, but with a helper. In this case, the helper is a protein. The protein provides a pathway or channel through the cell membrane. This is necessary for molecules that are polar or ionic. Remember that the inside portion of the cell membrane is hydrophobic, so polar molecules like water cannot pass through very easily. Each channel will only allow a specific molecule through. The channel protein on the right will only allow the yellow spheres to pass, but not the red triangles. Aquaporins are a special type of channel protein for transporting water. These proteins were actually found on accident by scientists studying Rh blood antigens.